life taught me business. How's it going everybody? Hope you're doing well. My name is Rex. I'm a serial entrepreneur and family man of five. I did not go to school for business. Life taught me business. This is a video about me sharing my entrepreneurial journey and things I've learned along the way. And because of this journey, I've been able to provide for my family. I've sent all three of my kids to private school, which I don't fully recommend because that was a lot of money. We're in our second place and we live a very comfortable life. And it starts with my first company at age 19. I know it's a bit hard for you to read, but these notes are more for me and hopefully I can present it to you properly. So as I said, I did not go to school for business, and these are things I've learned building businesses. Before I get into what I learned building the businesses, the base foundation is quite important. I first learned my initial core skill, which was, in my opinion, sales and marketing. I also had a great opportunity to learn about business at a showroom that I took over and helped a very stern but friendly German man run it. And I also got further confirmation that whatever niche you're in, you need to become the expert of that. So these were the lessons before being able to even start a business. So I learned how to sell in a way I called a world-class experience. We talk about that in another video. I learned how to run a business while learning how to deal with the taxes. And I also became an expert in my niche. Before starting this next company, I did go into night school, joined associations, and worked with companies to get product certifications. I then started RKDs, RKD Spaces, which is basically a renovation company. I mean, we started it off by knocking door to door, selling window coverings, and by the end of it, we were doing $100,000 home edition. This business was kind of easy to start because it was during the reno era, during the reno boom, when the government was offering rebates on replacing your windows, rebates on the toilets. Uh, there were all these shows on TV showing off people remodeling their homes. It was a perfect time for me to get into it. From this business, I learned that you truly can find your own work. So through flyers, through publication ads, magazines, etc., and networking, you can find your own work. Another lesson I learned from this one is that business takes a lot of work and a lot of attention. Something for some reason I didn't realize was a thing. At that point, I still thought you could make money easily. Example, we had so many jobs going on at a time that I would get a call at 8 p.m. from Mary saying, you know, my plumbing's not working, my faucet isn't working because your plumber left, he's not coming back until tomorrow, but I need my faucet. And I'd have to drag my butt out there and finish this guy's job. Not something I really wanted to do at 19, 20 years old. At that time, I thought I was the boss. I didn't need to be doing any of that stuff. So it did become a lot of stress after a while. So I stopped getting in new work because I wanted to take a break. We took a break, we went to Vegas, we came back, and that was just around the 2008 recession time. And when we came back, I had not built a pipeline of customers to come back to. So I was starting all over again. But rebates for renovations were gone, the market was going down, less people wanted to remodel their homes. But luckily, one of the subcontractors we were working with was very interested in buying our client list. So in a very neat and clean way, we exited this business. In hindsight, now that I look back, I think I should have hired more help. That way I wouldn't have gotten as stressed. Once I exited here, I ended up getting a full-time job working with Rogers, which is a big telecommunications company. And that place really hyped me up. I became one of the top sales reps within four months. And I mean top in Canada. With that fire in me, I went and I asked my wife, who at the time was my girlfriend, hey, why don't we start you a, your own business? So we found out what she was good at and she said, well, she likes baking. She enjoys baking. Maybe she'd like to do some sort of baking. This was during the Cake Boss era when cakes were a hot thing. So in 2009, I think it was, she ended up going into night school to learn more about cakes, to become more of an expert at her craft. We started KK Specialty Cakes, which is purely based on social media. That's what I learned from this company was that social media marketing works because literally 80, 90% of our business was all from social media, organic social media, not paid ads. And this was on Facebook only before Instagram even existed. However, the next thing we learned was what made us exit. Far too much work. She got really busy making specialty cakes, making basic catering orders, making truffles, and it was just too much work on her. And at that time, we weren't interested in buying a shop because we were still working out of home and then hiring other help. So we said, you know what, this is not something we want to do, maybe keep it as a hobby, and we exited. In hindsight, I think we should have outsourced all of the monotonous things, such as cupcakes, cookies, and leave all the specialty products and work for her. Then that would have been a lot less work for her and we would have been able to scale the business. Hindsight's 2020. Keep in mind, life, real life is also going on in the background and a lot of in-between things that aren't mentioned here. So me being excited that business works and we've now succeeded for a second time being able to get our own work. I was talked into by a rep there who was a realtor at the time and a very, very good friend. He says, Rex, I think you should get into mortgages or real estate, man. I think that would work for you. And I thought about it and I said, well, I don't know. I don't really know that many people. Don't you have to know people for people to buy houses from you? And he's like, well, I'm the realtor. Why don't you get your mortgage license and then we can work together. It didn't take long to convince me. So I quit Rogers, which was a pretty awesome job. 
and I went to school for mortgages. I think the course was only like two weeks long or something. But to further continue my education, I bought magazines and books and I read through those. And once I understood mortgages, I felt like I needed to learn more about money. So I ended up becoming an associate at a credit counseling firm, learning as much as I could. I left and then I started cold reaching to get mortgages. And it was a wild ride. In the first year, I was labeled Rookie of the Year because I would brought in so many deals. However, there was a double-edged sword to that. So my lesson learned here was to not pick a career based on income. I ended up going into mortgages because he had sold me on how much money mortgage agents and realtors make. And I was like, oh wow, that's awesome. But while I was in there, I was getting a lot of B and C deals, which make more money, but also come with a lot more headache. And again, I was getting calls in the evening of people, hey, is my refinance gonna go through, yada, yada, et cetera, et cetera. And it's just not something I enjoyed dealing with. Now, I know being a mortgage agent isn't exactly your own business because I was under a broker, but I consider it my own business because I'm finding my own customer, I'm doing the deal, and then I'm dealing with the underwriter. That's pretty darn close to running your own business. After I left this, I ended up working for a retail and wholesale distribution, similar thing I did up here, which was construction and interiors. I'm not gonna mention those, even though they're crucial in part of my learning process to set me up for the next business that I started. And this, in my opinion, was the most successful business that I started because it was fun while I did it. And that's where I learned that work can be fun. So I started Meal Inc., which is a vape company, back when vape was very, very, very new. I was one of the original five companies in Canada. And by like year two, we were one of the top three. And that brings on the second lesson. Nothing lasts forever. For four years, I ran this company, sales, logistics. We hired people for manufacturing, help out in the back end, back at the shop. But I was doing most of the marketing, business development, and making all the system decisions. In our first year, we did half a million dollars in revenue, and it only grew from there. One of the main reasons I was able to start and run this business was because of the in-between experience I had after leaving mortgages. Spending time working with a distribution company really showed me how easy it was for me to do it myself. The exit here had a lot to do with life the economy of the industry and where laws were going. That's a large video on its own that we can talk about in the future. In hindsight, because my attention was required somewhere else, I should have hired more help. I should have trusted other salespeople so that I could have stepped back because really all I've been doing here is creating myself jobs, not really businesses. When COVID hit, I took a bit of a break. During that break though, it wasn't a waste because I was taking care of the kids, the house, which are things that I ignored while running all these businesses. But like I said, it wasn't just time wasted. I ended up teaching myself how to edit videos and created a YouTube channel that ended up being monetized. I also spent a lot of time learning about social media marketing and how it's changed. But I've taken that knowledge and I've started another business. My wife enjoys photography very much and says she would love to do just photography and nothing else in her life. So I said, you know what? I'm gonna try and make that happen for you. And we started. We started doing it organically. Now we've started using other methods of marketing and she's grown from 10 clients a month to now 60 clients a month within three weeks. So what I've learned from this business that I've recently started, I've actually crossed it out because I think I'm still learning. I'm looking at multiple ways that I could possibly scale this and turn it into a business where she may not have to be the sole photographer. So I'll be back with this. And I've also got two more businesses that I've started and we'll see where they go. The point of these three is to run a case study. Everything on these pages is real and I have proof. This is back before cell phones had good cameras and we we're using a Sony Cybershot to take pictures of our work. And most of the time I didn't even upload it into my computer. So it's stuck on an external hard drive, some memory card somewhere, but we have pictures of every other business on the internet and it's been a long wild ride. Anyway, that was my entrepreneurial journey. Hopefully inspires somebody, helps somebody. I'm hoping people can find value in my journey. Make it a great day. Peace out.